bring your attention to the breath, and see what the body needs right now in terms of the breathing. It's a very immediate way of showing goodwill for yourself, because there's so many burdens we have in life. It doesn't make any sense that we add optional burdens on top of ourselves, but that's what we do. And one of the first ones is by allowing the body to breathe in a way that's not comfortable. After all, it is the force of life, and it is your body. So give it some space to breathe in a way that feels good. When the body feels good, then the mind is put in a much better mood. And when the mind is in a better mood, it's a lot more likely to be kind not only to itself, but also to other people. All too often you hear the stories about people being kind to themselves, in other words, just giving themselves extra little gifts. And this is a kind of gift you can give yourself, but it also spreads to others as well. There's that story of the person who worked at a meditation retreat was telling me one time that when people were doing insight meditation, they tend to write nastier notes to each other. And when they were doing metta meditation, they tended to write nicer notes, but also to take more honey into their, in their tea. And that is one way of being kind to yourself, but the Buddha's way is a lot more, a lot wiser, and it spreads its benefits around. Because when the mind is in a good mood, and it's carrying that sense of wellness around with it in the body, then the idea of doing something harmful to somebody else is not nearly as attractive. The reason we harm others is because we're in a bad mood, and we figure as long as we're in a bad mood, might as well put everybody else in a bad mood too. So we're giving ourselves the reasons we're in a good mood. The body feels good, feels nourished. The mind feels rested. Why do harm to anyone? Why wish harm on anybody? So this is a good way of starting with goodwill. Create a sense of well-being that you feel inside. Then you're a lot more likely to want to spread goodwill to others. And not only that, there are times when we are good to others simply because we want to get something out of them. And so the goodness we do is consists of things we think they'll like. But sometimes the kindest thing you can do for somebody is something they don't like. And you've learned this if you've been a parent. There are times when you have to be really strict with your children, even though they don't like it, but it is for their own good. And so if you're concerned about pleasing them all the time, then there's going to be a problem. But if you have a sense of confidence inside, a sense of well-being, a sense of solidity inside, it's a lot easier to figure out what really needs to be done, even though it may be unpopular, and stick with it for the good of everybody involved. This is a kind of goodness that spreads its goodness around, spreads its happiness around. And so it only makes sense that you should try to develop this skill and then learn how to carry it with you as you go through the day. Because your goodwill is going to be called on all the time as you're dealing with other people. So make sure that it's ready. <laughs>